Hi, my name is Mark Wanschneider, and I'm a software engineer here at Google. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you today about using the Nearby Messages API and Beacons. Nearby Messages is a new API that enables your device to react to nearby objects and microlocations, such as bus stops, train platforms, or even indoor locations such as exhibits in a museum. It makes use of a whole host of technologies, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio, and most interestingly for us today, Bluetooth beacons powered by Eddystone. Now, for more information on the whole beacon platform, check out our video, Developing with Beacons. However, here are a few quick reminders. This is a beacon, as is this, as is this, this, and all of these. In the most simple of terms, beacons are little Bluetooth low energy or BLE devices that sit around yelling loudly, well, if radio waves could yell, that they're here. And that's it. There's just this little guy saying, I'm beacon 12345. And this one saying, I'm beacon 54321. There's typically a little battery in them, and they'll broadcast that information one to 10 times a second. Now, your mobile phone or tablet or laptop, if it chooses, can scan for these devices and use whatever it knows about those beacons when it sees one. And that's the catch. Beacon 12345 isn't necessarily super interesting by itself. It's far more interesting or far more useful if I know that Beacon 12345 is sitting on my desk in London on Buckingham Palace Road. But BLE devices can't really communicate that much information. Again, all they can really do is say, hi, I'm Beacon 246810. To get past this, we have to register some data to associate or store with this beacon so that when we see it, we can fetch the data associated with it and use it for whatever we want like identifying our bus stop. Not unexpectedly, since I'm up here recording this video, we have a solution that does exactly this, the Nearby Messages API. Once it sees a beacon and determines that it's one of yours, it will fetch the data for it and return that information to your app. Let's look at how that works. First, we have a beacon sitting around announcing its presence to, well, anybody who's listening. Next, you walk past with your mobile device running an app using Nearby Messages, and it sees that beacon. Nearby Messages then goes to the server to see if it knows about that beacon, and any information about that is returned to your app. If the beacon is one you know about, the app can start to use that information. Getting started with the Nearby Messages API and your beacons does have a few steps, but fortunately they're all pretty straightforward, so we'll walk through those now. First, you need some beacons. Eddystone is an open format and anybody can support it in their beacon hardware, so you have lots of choices when you choose from whom to buy. Make sure the ones you're purchasing support the Eddystone format for maximal interoperability, and then you can work with the vendor to address other things like battery life, weather conditions, and broadcast frequency. Second, provision and register the beacons. This will be a combination of using the beacon vendor's provisioning applications to activate the beacon and configure just how often it broadcasts and at what signal strength. And then you'll need to register some data with the Proximity Beacon API for that beacon. This registered data is what the Nearby Messages API will return to you when it sees one of your beacons. To help you use the Proximity Beacon API to register data for your beacons, there's a website with documentation, as well as a GitHub repository with a sample app to show you how it's done. Finally, you integrate the Nearby Messages API into your application to start looking for those beacons that you provisioned and registered. This is known as subscribing to messages for those beacons. So on Android, you'll, you'll set up the subscription for those messages by using the message filter class and adding Eddystone device filters. This message filter forms part of your subscription options that you then pass to nearby.messages subscribe. For iOS, it's going to be quite similar. You'll be working with a GNS strategy object, 
and telling it you want beacon messages. And then you set up the subscription to those messages. But really, rather than bore you to death here with screenshots of IDEs and websites and documentation and code, I'm going to point you at the excellent Getting Started page, along with samples and other documentation for the Nearby Messages API. Using Nearby Messages together with Beacons allows you to open up a whole new world of context sensitivity in your apps. Let's take a quick look at some of the places you can go for more information about what I've talked about today. For information on using Beacons, such as Eddystones in general, visit developers.google.com beacons. For Nearby and the Nearby Messages API, visit developers.android.com slash nearby and developers.android.com slash nearby slash messages. Now, for the registering data part of working with beacons, you'll use the Proximity Beacon API, and you can get more information at developers.google.com slash beacons slash proximity, as well as checking out our GitHub repository at github.com slash google slash eddystone. We've got a bunch of sample apps there that have both iOS and Android versions for maximal choice and will hopefully get you started doing a lot of cool things. So I hope this video has helped you learn how to go about using the Nearby Messages API along with your beacons and pointed you in the right direction. I certainly had fun making it.